Hi guys, Mr. Pollock Biology here once again with the fifth video in a series looking at the super top secret teacher only specimen material set 2 for AQA AS Biology new specification 2016. This is a paper one video, this is the fifth video. That's going to take me a long time to keep saying. So we've done DNA RNA, we've done um, fish and exchange, we've done uh, field mice, we've done bit of biochemistry and co-transport and now question five leads on to a really nice topic cells in particular this is a eukaryotic cell it's an animal cell so let's get stuck in um you should really watch my video on um building a eukaryotic cell and all of the organelles and what they do i'll put a couple of cards just above here um click on them and i'm sure you'll find them very useful indeed but for the time being Let's get stuck into this question. So here's our beautiful, beautiful, beautiful eukaryotic animal cell. And we've got to label B and C. So there is B. It looks like a flattened stack of membrane discs, which means it could only be... Oh, and they're not connected. Okay, so it could only be uh, the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Golgi. There we go responsible for packaging and modifying proteins that have been made by the endoplasmic reticulum, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And then C, um, we have the classic, the vintage, the absolute favourite, the mitochondria. There we go. Very nice. Uh, mitochondria. There we go. Um, and honestly, this is a lovely question. What a, what a nice question to ask. Um, that could be off a year seven paper. Name two structures present in plant cells that are not present in animal cells. Oh my days, AQA, thank you so much. Vacuole, chloroplasts, how easy. I hope that's easy anyway. Um, I think that's a gift, absolute gift of a question. But hey, here we go. Um, next part is a bit more tricky. Again, it's factual recall though, so we've got uh, a biologist prepared a sample of organelles labelled C, so they're mitochondria. Mito. Uh, from liver, he used the following method. He added the liver tissues to an ice-cold, buffered solution with the same water potential as the liver. He mixed the liver in a blender, and then he filtered the mixture. Then he spun the filtered liquid in a centrifuge at low speed. A pellet appeared. In the bottom, he poured off the liquid above the pellet into a second centrifuge tube, spun it again at a higher speed, and got the organelles labelled C. So it's asking you to describe what's going on in this whole thing. But first, why is it ice cold, buffered, and at the same water potential? It's ice cold to reduce the activity of enzymes. And crucially, it's the lytic enzymes, the ones that would be uh, responsible for digesting um, the organelles in the cell. Okay, so let's have a little look. See, so it stops activity of enzymes to prevent digestion of the organelles. We want to keep those intact. It's buffered pH buffer that is, to maintain pH. And this kind of counterintuitively um, means that we don't want to stop any enzymes on proteins being denatured. Which you kind of think, well, if we're stopping the activity of enzymes, well, why not let them be denatured? But, you know, maybe we want to keep the mitochondria um, able to function in case we want to do any further experiments that rely on the enzymes inside being still functional. So maintain pH to avoid denaturing enzymes so make some papers allow you to say to, to prevent damage to organelles just that wishy-washy kind of approach but we'll go for denaturing enzymes this one uh, and at the same water potential that means it's isotonic so that is to avoid water moving in and out so it's to stop osmosis so water will only move in and out at the same rate Got to use that word osmosis though. Um, and this prevents the osmotic lysis or the breaking down through osmosis or the, the bursting through osmosis, prevents osmotic lysis of the organelles. Again, it's all about protecting those organelles. 
So nice, 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 nice. And then, uh, why did he use a blender? Why did he blitz it with a blender? And when, why did he filter it? Well, you blend it to break open the cell membranes. Okay, so to open the cells, essentially. So you open the cells. Uh, let's go for uh, break open cells. And then, crucially, you want to filter it so that you remove any cellular debris. Okay, so filter to remove cellular, cellular debris because what you don't want is chunks of membrane and stuff that are equal density to your organelles that might get mixed in when you start spinning things out in a centrifuge. So removing cellular debris that may contaminate our samples. So there we go, remove cellular debris will do for two marks. Then where we go, we're looking for the one that makes up most of the first pellet. So this is the one that span out at low speed. So low speed in a centrifuge results in the spinning out of the most dense organelles. And the most dense, the densest, the big daddy of them all is the nuclei, the largest, most dense organelle. Well, the most dense anyway, don't know about largest. Um, so there we go, the nuclei, or the nucleus. There we are. Beautiful. And pressing on, we spin it again slightly faster, higher speed to obtain the sample of organelles labeled C. Why? Because mitochondria, mitochondria are less dense than nuclei. Nice and straightforward. Less dense than nuclei. If you've got any doubts about this whole um, this process, I have done a video on this that's pretty good. Um, so I hope you would watch that and see if it's uh, any good for you. Um, but other than that, this is a really nice little question. So I hope that's been useful. 